All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for waiting. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm Cody. I'm a marketing specialist here at QNAP and I'm here with our product manager, Deval. And today we're going to be discussing NAS remote access. Uh, some of the security risks that come with remote access and some best practices if you wish to enable remote access. So taking a look at the agenda here, we'll start with a brief intro to network attached storage in general. Uh, then we'll look at a, different, uh, a few different ways remote access can be achieved. And then we'll go over each method, including uh, port forwarding, my QNAP cloud link and access via a VPN or SSL connection. So as many of you know, uh, one of the fundamental elements of network attached storage is that it can be accessed locally over your network or if you choose remotely like a private cloud. Uh, this flexibility has often been a benefit of having a NAS. However, to enable remote access, you have to expose the NAS to the outside world as you're exposing it to the internet. And this carries inherent risk of cyber attack. Uh, keep in mind that you don't have to have the NAS open to the internet and you can choose to just allow access over your LAN, uh, keeping the NAS relatively secure. But if you want remote access, there needs to be some exposure to the outside. So there are a few ways in which you can achieve remote access from outside of your network to your NAS. Uh, you can forward ports so that the port for the NAS service is open and you can access it directly. You can use my QNAP cloud link service provided by QNAP, which routes connections and data through QNAP servers and then to the NAS. Or you can access your NAS over an encrypted VPN connection or SSL connection. Port forwarding is where you open up ports in your router, which are dedicated for certain services on your network so that those services can be accessed directly from outside of your network. Uh, this is typically done on your router, although with UPnP routers, you can also access port management within the NAS OS, but this also brings added risk. Uh, opening your ports in general is a higher vulnerability method. Uh, opening ports to access the NAS will make them more vulnerable to ransomware attacks. In, in the past, our snapshots have been a good defense against ransomware, but Many of the more recent ransomware attacks have been able to delete snapshots. So it's important to understand the added risk you take on if you choose to access the NAS by port forwarding. My QNAP Cloud Link is another way in which you can access your NAS remotely, and it doesn't require you to forward any ports. Uh, using My QNAP Cloud Link routes an encrypted connection to uh, well, it, it routes the connection to the NAS through the QNAP servers uh, when you access your NAS. And some may not be comfortable with their data going through QNAP servers, but it is encrypted when it does so. Uh, in addition to possible privacy concerns, uh, this method does give slower access to the NAS as the data is being routed through the QNAP servers and then to the NAS. But this is a more secure method to enable remote access to the NAS from a cybersecurity standpoint. Uh, additionally, this is the simplest way to set up remote access on the NAS, and it's very easy to implement. Uh, one way to access the NAS directly with a high degree of security is to access the NAS via a VPN connection. Uh, you can set up the NAS as a VPN server. Uh, you'll open one port for the VPN, but the traffic going to and from the VPN will be encrypted. Another way to set up access to your NAS from the outside is to use an SSL connection. Uh, like the VPN, you will open a port for access to the NAS, but the connection will be encrypted. Uh, unlike the VPN connection, however, you will need to purchase an SSL certificate. Uh, the security advantage of an SSL connection compared with a VPN connection is that if the VPN connection were to get hacked, the hacker would have access to the entire network. Uh, with an SSL connection, they would only have access to the NAS. And if you're choosing to set up remote access to your NAS 
whatever method you ch you do choose, uh, it's important to take steps to mitigate security threats. Uh, one of the best ways you can do this is to uh, keep your firmware updated regularly as cyber threats often ex exploit vulnerabilities that may have already been patched in recent updates. Uh, another setup you can uh, you can take is to change the default ports that you open for the typical, for example, the typical HTTP port to access the NAS is port 8080, but you can change this port to make it less predictable. Uh, additionally, QNAP included, includes the malware remover app and security counselor app to help you manage NAS security. And QNAP also has an ex a security advisory newsletter that you can subscribe to. In addition to taking security precautions, it's always advisable to maintain regular backups of your data so you, so you can use the QNAP to make regular backups to another NAS, an external drive, or cloud storage. And so with that, I'll uh, hand things over to Deval, and he's going to uh, give us a live demo to help display some of these things. Thank you very much, Cody. All right, let me share my screen first. All right, so first of all, good morning, everybody. My name is Deval. I'm the product manager here at QNAP, and today we'll be looking at best practices on how to access your NAS remotely uh, and in a secure manner, right? So first of all, I'm gonna, well, multiple scenarios I'm gonna go through again is you know, opening, up a, opening up a port on the, on the router and accessing the NAS directly um, using, you know, using just the HTTP or HTTPS protocols. And uh, we can also look into another scenario where you're going to be able to access your NAS through MyQNAP Cloud. Uh, via MyQNAP Cloud, you can access your NAS through our server, so data is encrypted. And but the major differences between MyQNAP Cloud and uh, opening up a port is uh, when you access your NAS through MyQNAP Cloud, uh, the data access will be a little bit slower uh, because the data routes through our servers then to your client computer. Um, whereas when you open up a port, uh, you're going to be accessing your NAS uh, directly using no servers in between. And uh, but um, again, when you access it directly, there's also some security threats um, or risks uh, that are available. I'm going to try to give you the best information uh, possible to how to mitigate those security threats and um, ensuring that if you, even if you do open the port, uh, you can securely access your NAS as well as make it make or ensure that it's secure. All right, first of all, um, I, I have a, um, here I have a NAS right right here. I'm gonna set this up. Right now it's only for local access. If you if you go to my QNAP cloud, it's not signed into any accounts and it's currently just as, think of this NAS as a brand new NAS. So let's, the first scenario as I mentioned, I'm gonna have uh, show you is how to access your NAS when you open the port or access it directly, basically. To access your NAS directly, um, you just go to control panel, first of all, and under general settings. So first of all, what we recommend you do is always ensure that change the default ports. Never use the default ports when you're accessing your NAS remotely. So by default port, I mean is 8080 or and 443, right? These are the remote access ports that you, you'll be accessing through Right, so I would always recommend to have these to something else. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna change it to 8900 for system port. I'm gonna change the port number to 444. Now you can change it to any number you want. Uh, there are certain, uh, I think there's 32,000 is the last or the most number that you can install, or sorry, that you can enter. Um, so right here, uh, I'm sorry, 65. 1535 is a maximum number. So all the way, start, the port number values, you can start from all the way number one to 65,535 number. Now you can choose any um, any of these numbers in between. Now there are certain services that already pre-configure, uh, they're already using certain port numbers. So you won't be able to use those port numbers. For example, FTP uses port 21. So if you try to access 20, uh, enter this 21, it will, the, the box will be red. That means that port is not, or is reserved for other services. That means uh, you cannot use that number. But if you choose any other number, and if, if, the, box doesn't, if the box doesn't turn red, that means that port is available. Um, again, you just make up a number um, because everybody knows that the default port for, for HTTPS, especially for QNAP is um, 443 
or for any other service, HTTP is 443, and then system port is always 8080 for QNAP and NASs. So they can always guess the port number if they want to try to brute force into your NAS or try to attack your NAS from outside. So changing that default port always helps because they, there's an added security. They need to also guess the port number. Now, remember, if you, if you already have a NAS device that you're already using and everything is working fine and you start changing the port numbers, you might have issues accessing a NAS through a browser or if you have any apps like a QSync or QFile on your computer or your, sorry, QFile on your phone or QSync on your computer, those services will stop working after changing the port. So you have to always update the port numbers on those applications. So let's, um, first of all, right here, so let's let you, let's say you're trying to just access your NAS using a browser, right? When you use the default 443, you, you see the port the, the IP address is just the IP address, the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address and nothing else after that, right? But see what happens when you when I change the port number. And that's what you have to do from now on if you do update the port number. So once you update the port number to something else other than 443. Um, then you gotta add, you have to make sure that you do update your applications. There's always an application. Let me see if I have an application installed on my computer. All right, I don't have QSync installed right here, but you just have, there's always a place to enter the port number um, uh, to access your NAS or just enter colon 444. So right here, let, let's, uh, it's still applying it. So I'm, we're gonna wait until, um, finish applying it. So from now on, after changing the port number, when you want to access your NAS, you have to enter HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the IP address colon 444. Now, once you update that 444, now you'll be able to access your NAS. And we always recommend to, to use HTTPS so another setting that I will also recommend is force HTTPS connections only. So QNAP will always force you to use HTTPS connections. So apply that as well. And so now on HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 10.15.10. Sorry, whatever the IP address you have on your NAS colon the port number, which is the 444 in my example or something else on your example. So ensure that you always use that port number and also force your connections. Now, because you you you'll be opening up your NAS for remote access, you always you always want to make sure that nobody tries to brute force into your NAS. So under security, you want to make sure go to IP access protection and check especially check SSH, Telnet, and HTTPS. Um, if you do use other services, right, we also recommend using FTP, Samba, and AFP. But majorly FTP, HTTPS, Telnet, and SSH, you need to check these box and then ensure that you change this to forever. So if somebody tries to guess or try to brute force into your NAS, they will be blocked access to your NAS uh, if they enter your password incorrectly multiple times. So just, um, so in within one minute and they try to five times, they will be blocked forever. And that's usually how a brute force attack will be happening on your NAS. So ensure that you change this forever. And then, but, in case if you have a user that uses your NAS and they just forgot the password and by mistake they entered it multiple times, they'll be blocked forever. Now, if, if you have a recognized user that you have on your NAS and the, you and the NAS block them, the IP address will be listed right here, right under allow or deny list. You can just click on that IP address and then just click on remove and that user will now be able to access the NAS again. But for everyone else, it'll be blocked forever, right? Um, you do have the ability to also uh, deny connections from this list. So if you wanna add a whole bunch of IP addresses, you can just click on deny connections from this list and I add those IP addresses and all those IP addresses will be blocked to access your NAS. They won't be able to access even the login page. So they'll just get um, this web page cannot be displayed. And you can also have a very detailed or very secured connection by just allowing certain IP addresses. But remember, anything outside that IP address, you won't be able to access a NAS at all. So they'll all be blocked. Only the IP address you have listed right here will be able to access the NAS. But to make it simple, you can just click on allow all connections and just enter this IP, uh, and just 
check these boxes and changes forever. So you'll be so if somebody tries to access your NAS, they'll be blocked forever. All right. So that's one. Uh, that's another setting I do recommend if you want to set this up for a more access. Now, as I mentioned, you do have to when you do when you want to open the port. Um, so you want to access your NAS uh, remotely, but also after changing the default address, you want to also uh, do MyQNAP Cloud account, right? So uh, what what MyQNAP Cloud allows you to do is um, MyQNAP Cloud not only allows you to access NAS remotely through our servers, but also provides you with DDNS service. This is this is a free service that QNAP provides. Now remember, let's say um, let's say if you want to access your NAS remotely, right? Um, you have to remember what your public IP address would be, right? So uh, your public IP address would be, you, you can go to whatismyip.com and then um, and then that will give you the IP, that will give you the public IP address of your of your network. And then you have to remember that IP address. When you're traveling, you have to, you, you have to remember that string of IP addresses to access your NAS remotely. Now that could be very confusing. Also, you may not be able to remember that IP address every single time. Another issue that you also may occur is uh, that IP address from for most of the service providers out there, the IP address keeps changing, right? So today will be a certain uh, today will be a certain string of IP addresses. Tomorrow there'll be another string of IP addresses. When you're traveling, this may be a problem, right? Because once the IP address changes, you can't access your NAS again. So with my DDNS service, this allows you to give instead of remembering an IP address. You just have to remember a, a name that you have given on your NAS, and then you can access your NAS just by using that name, right? So what QNAP does is that let's let's first get started, so I can show you what happens. So first of all, you have to create my QNAP Cloud account. So you can go to myqnapcloud.com and just create an account. Uh, that will and using that account, just enter that information that you have entered on that. Um, so I'm just going to enter my email address and password. Once it authenticates, it'll ask you to use a device name. If you have already used MyQNAP Cloud and you have given a device name previously, you can also click on this button and it will show you the list of uh, list of uh, devices that you have uh, or the list of addresses that we have given. And if that number, if that name is available, you can just click on that and it will be able to access it. Or else you can give a new device name. Now this is a name that has to be unique. Nobody, nobody on the internet has to have the same name because if you have, if two people have the same name, QNAP won't allow you to access your NAS. So let's say if I give this the wall, oh, it's available actually. Um, oh, let's just give it a QNAP. So QNAP is not available. So this, the there will be a red uh, cross right here, or the box will be red. This name is already used. You cannot use this particular name. So you just have to think of a unique name that you want to give to your NAS. So I'm just going to give, let's say, DP973AX, uh, which is the one that you're using. That name is actually available. So I can now use this particular name. And you also have to ensure that this name is not complicated enough to not to remember. Like if you if you forget this name, again, the, the problem of not able to access your NAS remotely happens again. So you just have to remember this particular name. Just hit click Next. Never select auto router configuration. We don't want to use UPnP services because that can be a, a point of attack uh, from hackers if you do use uh, auto router configuration. Now, if you do open the port, you can just use my DDNS service. You can uncheck my QNAP Cloud link. Now, my QNAP Cloud link is the second way I'm going to show you to access your NAS remotely. This, uh, when you check this box, you can also access your NAS directly using opening the port. You can also access your NAS using a, using a servers if you do want to go that route as well. So uh, right here, I'm just going to select my DDNS and my QNAP Cloud link. If you don't want to use our servers, you can just uncheck this box and just use DDNS. And under customize, you can just uh, change this to private, and everything will be private on your network. Um, so once you have done that, hit next. QNAP will start registering your name. Uh, Right, so now if you go to my DDNS, QNAP will now show you the uh, your public IP address as well as what uh, it has successfully updated that IP address. So, what happens? What this service does is that QNAP will all you have to do is remember this particular name, and 
you can access your NAS directly using this particular name. And then QNAP will take care of all, all the IP address that be, that's been up, updated. So QNAP updates the IP address from your ISP provider every few minutes. And this happens automatically. You don't have to do any configuration. This already happens automatically. And um, if you want to manually update it, just click on the update button and the, and the IP address will be updated. But if you see, it's actually updated every hour um, or on your NAS. So even if your IP address change, if your ISP changes your IP address, Within an hour, QNAP will be able to update that IP address and you can now use your NAS. So that's a great service that QNAP provides. And again, it's a free to use IP address. Now let's let's say if I want to try to use that IP address, right? Um, so HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash ax.myqnapcloud.com colon 444. That's, uh, I think it was, um, Let's go back to my QNAP cloud again. It's 973. Um, now, if you if you see right here, the QNAP cannot access your NAS because the port are still closed. So once you register your NAS and you use DDNS service, you still have to do an additional extra step uh, on your router to to be able to access your NAS remotely. Now, once you have opened, uh, so once you have entered your DDNS service, you have registered in NAS. You have to access if you want to access your NAS directly remotely. You also have to go to your router, and you have to. So, this is a QNAP QHORA router that we have. But the steps I'm going to show you should remain the same for any other router you're using. The 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 only issue is that the those settings are usually hidden under multiple different pages. So you wanna, so if you have a router, you wanna look into inside your firewall, or you wanna look inside um, maybe access protection, those are NAT slash firewall. So any of, this, uh, any of those um, pages, you should be able to see something called port forwarding or NAT, right? So you have to remember to check those settings. So once you find those pages, the next steps I'm gonna show you should remain the same for most of the routers out there. So first of all, you, have to, you want to create a service that you want to be able to access your NAS remotely, right? So I'm going to create an HTTPS service right here. So I'm going to click on Add Custom Service. So I'm going to name it as H, NAS HTTPS. Protocol, you can change it to TCP. A WAN port is 444, right? And then the description, just NAS remote access. It, it's optional. You don't have to enter anything. But you have to remember the NAS service name could be anything. The only important two settings is TC, a protocol TCP and uh, service port, the port number for your HTTPS. In my example, it's 444, but in your example, it could be something else. Just enter that number right here and click on save. So once you create a service, then you have to open the port under the firewall. So under NAT, you have to go to port forwarding and click on add a new rule. The WAN service port that we created, you have to select that the WAN port of your router, the host IP address, this will be the IP address, the local IP address of your NAS. So this will be the IP address, the local IP address that you see that starts with either 192 or 10, you just have to enter that. So on my example, it's 10.1, 10.100 uh, or 10.138. So that'll be my hosted IP address. The LAN service port would be 444. So that the same port that you have open for WAN service port, you also have to enter that under LAN service port. Description, again, NAS remote IP address. This would be something that you have to enter. Other uh, Everything else is optional. Once you, uh, once you enter that information, click on apply. And now, I sh see I sh I'm able to access your my NAS remotely. See, as soon as I open the port, I'm able to access your NAS remotely. There's a good troubleshooting step right here to confirm if you have, if you if your port is open or not, you can go to something called portforward.com or um, I'm sorry, um, port forward checker. Just Google port forward checker. And then uh, the remote IP address will det detect by itself. All you have to do is enter that number. 
and it should say the port is open. If you see the port is still closed, that could be an, that could be multiple issues. One of them I can think of is your there sh there'll, there'll probably be another router in your network. So there'll be two router setups. Sometimes there are modems in your network. Modem can also act as a router as well. So that could also be another issue. So you want to you want to check that as well. But as long as it says open, that means you're able to access your NAS remotely. So this is a great solution. If you want to this when you use this service, you actually access your NAS directly. There's no uh, our servers are not involved with this, but you can access your NAS remotely. Now, if you remember, it gives you a privacy network message, right? Or a privacy error when you try to access this network because you're not using uh, any valid HTTPS um, certificate. So we also recommend when you want to access your NAS remotely, another great recommendation is purchasing an SSL certification. Now with QNAP Cloud, QNAP provides an SSL certificate that you can actually purchase. So when you go to myqnapcloud.com, log in via, via the same account that you have and go to SSL certificate and you can actually buy a new SSL certificate um, for your MyQNAP Cloud. We actually provide that right now for, uh, there's a deal going on for three years. Did you purchase a, uh, for three years? You get two extra months. So for three years, your, uh, your connection is encrypted using MyQNAP Cloud certificate as well. QNAP, not only pro, not only you can use your um, like our SSL certificate, if you want to use your own SSL certification, you can actually go to um, security and you can actually enter your SSL certificate credential right here. You can also get certificates from GoDaddy or any of the services as well. It, uh, just go to SSL and private security under security and control panel, and you can actually access your, uh, you can actually import your uh, SSL certificate right here as well. Um, but once you purchase, uh, so let's say if you do purchase an QNAP Cloud SSL certificate, right? So to, to add that into your NAS, you have to log into your NAS and go back to My QNAP Cloud. Under My QNAP Cloud, you can go to SSL certificate, and then there are two options, right? You have the My QNAP Cloud. QNAP also works with Let's Encrypt, and you can also do it's a free and automated uh, open certificate authority that actually issues a valid security as well. So you can also use Let's Encrypt, uh, but in this example, I'm going to show you the My QNAP Cloud one. So you click on click on Download and Install. And once you purchase your SSL certificate, it should show up right here and click on confirm. So right here, if you notice, it says not secure, right? So once you install this SSL certificate, see, um, you're gonna see, so you obviously you have to reload because now the connection is encrypted rather than not secure. So give it a few minutes. And now if you see that error message disappeared, as well as if you let, if you click on this button, it says connection is secure. Now, when you so this is a great example when you when you're accessing your NAS remotely and using SSL certification, whatever changes you do right here, like uploading or downloading file, the 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 connection is encrypted, so nobody can snoop into your connection and get access to your NAS. So we highly recommend using some kind of SSL certificate. You can purchase a QNAP SSL certificate. You can use Let's Encrypt, or you can actually use your third-party SSL certificate like GoDaddy or anything else. So but so this concludes the example of opening the port on your router and accessing a NAS directly. Now, for users who have the you don't who don't have the ability to access or open the port on the router, QNAP does give the ability to access your NAS through our services. So to do that, go back to uh, go back to uh, my QNAP Cloud, and then you have to go to my QNAP Cloud link and click on install. Once you install this, so right here, if you go to device management, um, it should show up in, uh, on this page. Right here. So see the DP973X is now showing up because now uh, the, the software is almost installed. So when you click here, you will be able to access your NAS directly. <clears throat> now, so, okay. So when using MyQNAP Cloud Access, you get, again, it does warn you about the data is going through our services. So it does go through our servers. So, but we don't save any data through uh, on our servers. We just help you create a link from the remote computer to your NAS. 
But whatever data that goes after actually goes through our service, but it goes directly to your computer. We don't save anything on our network. So our network just helps you create a tunnel between the remote computer and the NAS. So click on I understand. And once you go to my, once you, so log in through myqnapcloud.com, go to device management and click on your NAS. You still have to access, you still have to enter your local NAS's IP uh, username and password. So once you enter your local IP address or let's see. All right, once you enter your username and password, now I'm able to access my files that are saved on my NAS. So I can now download anything from my computer. I can actually, uh, so I can download anything from my NAS. I can actually upload uh, directly from the, from, uh, com from my computer. I can upload files, I can upload folders from my computer directly to your to the NAS. I can also share links. Um, I'm sorry, you could go back to, if you wanna share this folder to somebody, someone else, you can actually right click and click on share. And now QNAP will allow you to share this particular um, folder onto a third party uh, or somebody else on your network. You can actually use this link and you can give this link to somebody else and, uh, and they, can access the, uh, they can access that particular folder using this particular link. So if you go copy this link, you can actually see it opens my QNAP cloud it connects to your NAS and actually gives access to your folders. Again, even after, even if you share the link, it actually does not save that folder on our servers. It still creates the link and access, uh, this folder is still saved on your NAS. When you give this link to somebody else, QNAP just uses my QNAP Cloud again to create another connection from your customer's computer to the NAS so they can access that particular folder. Um, you can always, or you can also email this particular link to some uh, to uh, somebody else. You can also password protect this link. So if somebody wants to access your pass uh, that link, they have to enter the password. Uh, you can, and these all services can be used my QNAP, with, via my QNAP Cloud. You can also go to services and go to private services uh, because we never published anything. So let's go back to um, publish services. Now let's say. So when you go to my QNAP Cloud, it only allows you to access your folders. But what say, let's say if you wanna access like your web interface. Uh, so if you wanna publish this, you're gonna click on private. Let's say if you wanna access photo station, video station, or music station, or any other services, you wanna um, check these box. So let's say whatever uh, service you wanna access, check the publish box and make sure you any, uh, check the private box as well. Um, and then click on apply. Oh, actually, you have to enter an access code. So, so once you publish these services, if you go to access services, now you can see your uh, file station, your photo station. So you can also access these apps other than just your shared folders. So you can access your photo station, you can access your file station, you can access your QU router desktop. So you can access other services as well. Let's say if you don't want to use my QNAP Cloud again, you can go to device details and then um, unregister your NAS. So QNAP will now unregister it. And then this will also remove it from using DDNS service as well. So be careful when you unregister your NAS. Right, so that concludes my QNAP Cloud services. So that's how easy it is to access your NAS. Again, as I mentioned, my, when you use my QNAP Cloud link, it, the, the data goes through our service. So the performance will be a little bit slower compared to what you access your NAS directly when you're opening the port. But um, but you do have both ways to access your NAS remotely, and this is a good steps to do when you want to access your NAS uh, remotely. All right, so that concludes today's demo. Back to you, Cody. So we'll just be going into a Q&A time after this. So um, just go ahead and put your uh, questions into into the question box, and uh, we'll be going over those. Uh, yeah, and we'll just go through all your questions. So just feel free to let us know. All right, so let's go through our questions again. Uh, uh, let me open up the questions page right here. All right, so the so first question is how do one how do I reconfigure 
uh, our first question is, um, uh, we have multiple questions. Will this webinar be on QNAP College after this? Yes. Uh, yes, Ken, it will be uploaded to our uh, YouTube page. Once the webinar concludes, it should be uploaded within a day or or within, 12, within 48 hours. And you, you will be able to play back uh, the video recordings as well as the demo that we did today uh, if you want to go back uh, and watch it again. Now, we have another question called, how do I reconfigure um, my QNAP Cloud? Let me share my screen again so I can show you live demo again. Um, now, if you want to reconfigure uh, my QNAP Cloud, and uh, this will um, this will now All right, I should be back online. There was an internet connection issue. Um, you should be able to hear um, hear me again. Okay, so um, yeah, so to reconfigure my QNAP Cloud, just open the my QNAP Cloud under overview page, click on the sign out button, and QNAP will now remove the my QNAP Cloud information. And then get, uh, remember in the beginning of the video, there was get started button. So use that button to reconfigure my QNAP Cloud. So hopefully that answered that question. Uh, can you map a folder? So you cannot map a, a folder remotely. You have to use service services like WebDAP because SMB services are local only. There are different ways to do uh, uh, to remotely map folders. Uh, we some that, that's called um, WebDAP services. So just Google. QNAP and WebDAV. And uh, QNAP will now, uh, there's actually a guide or tutorial on how to use WebDAV services to map folders remotely on your NAS. So if that's your question. For uh, local uh, for local mapping, just use QFinder and click on Network Drive. Um, just enter your credentials. Once you enter that, click on the folder that you want to map, and then click on um, Map Network Drive. So that's the easiest way to map network drives on the local computer. Uh, Keith had another question: Will there be, will be will there be a demo of accessing a NAS via VPN? Um, unfortunately, VPN uh, is a topic that uh, that re will require another webinar. So we'll be concluding. Uh, we'll be having another webinar regarding VPN access because. Um, uh, there are different services that we need to go through. Um, uh, so we have to, uh, so that will be another webinar dedicated for VPN access. Uh, and hopefully, I think we should be doing that uh, uh, next month. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and because there's a lot to cover using VPN services. So we'll go through that um, on our next webinar, which should be uh, next month. Uh, what's going to happen if I turn off Auto router configuration. Now, if you if you are using auto router configuration on your QNAP NAS, and if you stop using that auto router configuration, uh, the ports that were open will be closed back again. Now, that depends on the router as well. Some routers don't update that information on their router page, but QNAP, if you disable this, the ports will be closed, and then you have to go and uh, um, you have to go back to the recording that we did for this, and then reopen the ports manually. So. The, the steps I showed you to open the ports manually, uh, you have to follow that to reopen the ports manually. Um, does web services have to be enabled to, uh, to for NAS UI to access? No, web service, you don't need to be enabled. You can actually disable this, and that's actually one of the important steps as well to ensure that you have secure connection to your NAS. So right here, if you see, my web server is disabled, and I can still access my NAS remotely, as well as I can access um, the NAS locally. Uh, the web server is a part, uh, is actually a service that you can actually use on the QNAP to actually host websites. QNAP also allows you to host website on that NAS, and you have to enable that uh, to use, uh, to host your website, your own personal website or business website from QNAP. But if you don't host any website, we recommend disabling this service. Um, so what is the best solution? Uh, Port forwarding, QNAP Cloud, VPN, or SSL? Um, there's no easy way to answer that uh, because different services provide you with different uh, different 
limit it comes with different limitations and different um features right for example port forwarding will allow you to access your nas directly without having to go through our servers that will be the fastest way to access your nas remotely um but we do recommend using ssl certificate but because you're opening the port there there is a risk involved uh to be able to 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 have your hat to to have your nas uh because the nas is now internet forward internet forward facing device so uh, people can access your device if they're able to guess your password and your login information. Now, a good uh, a good way to secure your NAS remotely, because I personally have used my NAS remotely because it gives me the best access method and also the fastest way. I change my port always. My ports are never default ports. I make sure my NAS is always um, always um, password. I use two-step verification. And also, I use QU Firewall. QU Firewall allows you to have your NAS uh, on your NAS. So QU Firewall allows you to, um, let me open, uh, hopefully I'm able to install this uh, quickly so users can see it. But QU Firewall allows you to uh, you know, configure um, geo-blocking so people who are remotely or from different regions won't be able to access your NAS. And always use, always use SSL certificate. I've always used SSL certificate to access my NAS remotely. So those are the advantages and the disadvantages of MyQNAP Cloud and SSL, sorry, port forwarding and SSL. If you're not concerned about, um, if you're not concerned about performance, you just wanna access your files remotely, the, the secu most secured way is MyQNAP Cloud because you never actually accessing your NAS directly. You're always going through MyQNAP Cloud services. So the, that would be the best solution if you don't, if you're not worried about, um, if you're not worried about uh, performance, right? And VPN, VPN again, VPN also creates a secure tunnel, but gives you. But when you do VPN, it actually opens a, it opens your network remotely. So people who access in VPN can also you can. There are ways to secure and secure your network, but when you do VPN connection, you you basically gain gaining access to your to your whole network remotely. So, but people who want to use VPN, they want to access something else as well on their network. Maybe they have another file server. Maybe they have another website or they have a local website on their uh, on that local network. They wanna access that devices as well. So VPN gives you the access to remote, uh, remotely access the whole network using a secure tunnel. Will my QNAP Cloud also work if I have only an IPv6 address external? Yes, it should work if you have an IPv6 address external as well. Can you can also remotely map if you're using VPN? So if you're using VPN, um, you can actually map your uh, your folders remotely. Just use a local IP address. If is uh, is access via MyQNAP Cloud the most secure method of remote access? Yes, Keith. So via uh, MyQNAP Cloud is considered to be the most secure method because you never actually opening or accessing your NAS remotely. You're going through our servers all the time. So and you also only hosting certain published services. So if you're not, so if you don't have it, if you don't want to access anything else other than just accessing your files, don't open up photo station or your web GUI or, or no, again, file station, just use my QNAP Cloud link and disable every other services. So going back here uh, under my QNAP Cloud link, under published services, ensure that everything is not published at all. And uh, those, and only your files will be able to access remotely. So hopefully that answered your question. Can you open port number to several clients, including the NAS on Qhora? Yes, you can open up any port number, uh, any ports to uh, any of the services. Going back to my uh, the Qhora, you can actually open up uh, different um, different services. It's not limited limited to opening just one port. You can actually open up multiple ports using service port management. Just create additional custom ports for any of the services that you want. Another question is um, from John. Uh, I think you may have to, uh, oh, I think the question goes back to, can you open a port number to several clients, including the NAS and Qhora, and the, port, the same port number? So there's a rule of thumb. You cannot use the same remote port number, 
right? So if you have, let's say if you have a, uh, let's say if you have a NAS, if you have multiple QNAP NASs and you, you want to access all your NASs remotely, what you can actually do is on, on your MyQNAP cloud under um, SSL certificate for, for NAS1, Okay, so going back to um, general settings, uh, under NAS1, you can actually have 444. For NAS2, you can maybe have 445. Now, for clients who cannot change the port numbers remotely, uh, I think this may get a little bit confusing, so hopefully you can, um, uh, I'll try to explain as best as I can. If you have, um, if you have a service that you wanna access your, uh, if you have, multiple local devices that uses the same port number, what you can actually do is you can actually use same local port, but use different remote ports. For example, I have another NAS that actually has, um, so NAS2, for example. Uh, I cannot change that port number for NAS from 444 to something else, right? I already have a NAS with, I have two NASs with 444. So I already open up a, a port number for 444, right? So 444 is right here. I can actually add a custom service called NAS2. I can just say uh, protocol again, TCP. Change the VAN port number to 445. So, so, uh, so once you have done that, when you go to NAT and firewall and go to NAT on the port forwarding, you can actually create and add another rule. Select the new port number, which is 445 the same man port, an IP address for the second NAS. And the LAN port, you can actually keep it same. So you can actually keep the same LAN port. So what, what QHORA will do is, QHORA will actually do, direct any service that will, any access that comes with 445 and actually go through 444. So even if you have multiple local devices that actually uses the same port number, you can actually have different VAN ports, but keep, keep the same LAN ports. So if you hit, hit apply, now let's say if you want to access your NAS2, all you have to do is uh, you can actually use uh, the, the new DDNS, just put 445, and it will actually direct you to the second NAS. So that's, uh, that's a quick, easy way to have multiple different uh, remote devices, but same port numbers. Uh, is there a Q firewall webinar? Uh, we don't have a dedicated Q firewall webinar, but we actually did uh, a quick web uh, workshop, uh, which was hosted last month. It actually goes through Q firewall. I would actually, and it's up on our YouTube page. Just go ahead and uh, look for that. I think what was it called? Um, it's QNAP TV. So look up QNAP College, and then. Uh, And then, yeah, the best practices to keep your uh, keep your NAS secure. This uh, this was a webinar I actually did, and it does cover QU firewall in that webinar. So I would recommend losing, using that as well. What about TeamViewer access? TeamViewer is actually another third-party service that we have access to. Uh, it actually is another secure way, but again, this is use this is using third-party services. So you have to use um, again, you have to depend upon how secure the TeamViewer services are uh, to but it's also another secure method to access your NAS remotely. But we can only guarantee my QNAP cloud as well as uh, other services as well. We have another question. So I can't find QU router in the QNAP app store. Oh, QU router is actually uh, only available for uh, for iOS and Android app store. Um, it's actually not available on QNAP app store because you have to use, because only available on QHORA, it's, our, our our firewall. So this is our oh, sorry our QNAP router. So a Q router is actually a QNAP router. The QHORA three zero one or QMIRROR is actually it's not an application available on App Store. All right, that was the last question that we have uh, available right now. I'm gonna wait for two more minutes if you have any further questions. If not, then thank you everyone for joining us. Um, but again, we're gonna wait two more minutes if you have any further follow-up questions.
let's um while we wait i think we have a q firewall installed let me see if i can give a quick demo yes q firewall is installed um so q firewall gives you a quick easy method uh uh so it gives you get started uh and get started you, the important thing is you have to remember to select the correct region right so click on uh so i'm united states i'm going to click on united states but remember to click um select the correct region enable firewall hit finish and then now you can actually access basic, basic protection so basic protection you can actually add um, um under uh, basic protection uh you have most of the services that are allowed you can actually uh, also do include subnet only so only local access will be allowed restricted security only local access everything else is uh, disabled and only local um, regions are allowed so you can select um uh you can select uh which regions you also if you want to add your uh, region as well you can actually select add another rule um you can actually uh, click on region and select multiple regions if you wanted to and then select um any protocols and then uh you can click on deny and the whole region will be blocked for remotely accessing your NAS. so um that's quick and a quick method to access your NAS or setting up your firewall on your network. I'm now re uploading the video. Uh, should be done. Uh, 48 hours, I would say. Yeah, 48 hours uh, should be up on uh, within our QNAP college within 48 hours. Can you explain the difference between private and custom in accessing your NAS? Private means um, uh, that means you might hear. Uh, my QNAP cloud. I think public services. So, uh, so public services again. These these services that you can. Uh, so, if you don't want to open the port, you you can all when if you don't open the port and you're accessing my QNAP cloud. You cannot access any of the apps, the apps they have right here, right? So these music station, photo station, web services, you can't access them remotely. So um, if you want to access these app remotely, you have to first of all publish them, right? So if you publish them, um, under access control, um, under private, you can only, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, device management. And as services, you can see uh, published services. Anything you don't check private will be listed as published services. But if you do click on private, you can uh, you can see um, only on your QNAP cloud. Uh, so you can only access it via QNAP cloud. Uh, if you do uh, if you don't do private, uh, you can actually just um, set up these, and you can actually add another user as well that are not my QNAP cloud. So my QNAP cloud also allows you to access your NAS if you it's if it's not registered and the, if it's so my QNAP cloud only uh, uh, only allows you to register with my Q, one with my with one ID only so you only can access via your ID now let's say if you want to give access to somebody else who doesn't have a QNAP NAS but they still want to access your NAS remotely right uh, and they want to access like file station photo station what you can actually do is you can actually add another user and then you can create another user called uh, uh, just have them create a my QNAP cloud account so let's say if you want to access you're going to add uh, uh, add another my QNAP cloud and enter his my QNAP cloud and he doesn't need a NAS you just need an ID right and once they have an ID just click on um, Mike uh, just enter his IP, uh, email address for which he used to access the mic or which he used to create the MyQNAP cloud and just check the box. And now he, once he accepts this, he can now uh, access your file station, photo station uh, remotely as well. So now they can access your your NAS remotely uh, using this uh, using this address, and they'll be see, able to see the NAS 
as well. Is there a webinar connecting two QNAPs in a different location for backup and uh, snapshot replication? We um, think as a good question, we can actually look into creating a webinar for that particular scenarios, but we do have a lot of webinars that do cover uh, hybrid backup sync. So you might wanna look into that and, uh, and also snapshot replication as well. So we have multiple webinars for snapshot and hybrid backup sync that allows, that goes to that setting. How do I access my QNAP settings remotely? So again, if you open the port, just enter your name.myqnapcloud.com and it just gives you the whole access to the whole NAS. So you can do anything. Um, so you can access your NAS settings and everything that you wanted to remotely. Uh, just go to your settings, control panel settings and everything. Uh, if you use my QNAP Cloud, you have to um, you have to go to publish services. Uh, you have to publish your NAS website and then uh, uh, check the box private and then, then you can access your MyQNAP Cloud. Uh, it'll be listed right here. All right, so that was the last question. So uh, again, thank you for uh, thank you, for, thank you for uh, thank you for joining everybody. Uh, my name is Deval. Um, uh, we'll be able to po we'll be posting this video pretty soon on our uh, on our QNAP Cloud website. And and you can uh, go back and review that if you needed to. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you guys. Yeah, and uh, we'll also put a link to the video in the follow-up email. Uh, so just keep your eyes open for that as well, or you can just find it on our YouTube, uh, my QNAP College channel. Thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you next time.